In this film, we'll be looking at how the Securities and Banking Commission in Mexico came to prioritize financial inclusion and how they put data at the heart of their policy making. About three years ago, we came together to build the mission and the vision for the CNBB. And that's when we decided to have financial inclusion uh, stand side by side uh, with financial stability. We decided that it wouldn't be worth our work to have a very stable financial system if it wasn't uh, also serving most of the people in the country. We realized that we needed a group of people that specialized in this and that worked full time on this. It's not one single thing that, that is needed, it's many things. So without a strategy, it would be really impossible, I'd say, to have an impact on financial inclusion. When we start discussing about financial inclusion, we realized that we need to have a goal. What was uh, the target? So for that reason, we thought it was useful to start measuring where we were in order to find out where we want to go. Data, it has been the foundation for the design of financial inclusion. What are the segments of the population that are not being served? Why? What type of products are not being offered? Uh, if we know which are the barriers and why people don't use uh, specific financial services, we can create policies uh, to increment the use of financial services. There are two main sources of data, uh, demand side data and supply side data. Supply data, it refers to, to the different products and services that the financial institutions are offering to the users. Positive thing about using supply data is that it was very cheap. We already have it in-house. Every three months, each type of institution sent us the information regarding the number of branches, the number of uh, ATMs, the number of POS, and also the, the number of accounts of, the, of each product that, that they have. And there are other indicators that are not financial sector indicators, but you could use to create indicators on financial inclusion. For example, those indicators, indicators on demographics. So how many adults live in a urban area? How many adults live in a rural community? And then matching that demographic data with your financial supply data. We just need to put it in the, in the, in the view of financial inclusion, which is something that we didn't uh, use it before. We thought of having a vehicle to share information. And that's how we create this idea of having a report on financial inclusion. At that time, we didn't have the budget to publish a report. So we went back to AFI and asked for their support so we can publish this report. The importance of data is that uh, it helps us to design policy that is factual and it's not based in intuition. So the report includes different topics, not only access and usage indicators, but also what is happening in the international uh, arena in terms of financial inclusion initiatives. So people that look at the report could know what are the trends, what are the best practices, and what other countries are doing that are having an impact on financial inclusion. And one concrete example is the implementation of banking agents in Mexico. It's not economical for banks to install branches in remote areas. So what we did is to create this figure of a banking agent so that banks can go and offer financial services in a cheaper way. And even though some of the policies that we have already instrumented are based on experiences from other countries, we will need to have data to measure the impact of these policies. Now the CMBV are preparing for the next stage of data gathering, demand-side data. Demand-side refers to the needs of the individuals, what everyone requires in terms to fulfill their financial needs. They are about to carry out a nationwide survey into the financial needs of the Mexican population as a whole. When we discuss about having a demand size survey, we thought that the best way to do this is leveraging in the institutional capacity that the country already has. In Mexico, we have a national institute that is dedicated to statistics. It has a very well reputation and it has the capacity to conduct surveys. So the INEGI is the expert on surveys. They are doing the survey. And us and the Ministry of Finance are doing the analysis. So it, it's a, a coordinated effort. Before you actually start collecting data, you really need to think through what is the best way of getting it. So 
it, it requires not only resources in terms of uh, uh, staff, but also in terms of um, the process. So it takes time to, to get the process right. Members of the CMBV Access to Finance Unit traveled to Oaxaca State, the poorest state in Mexico. They went to see the results of some of their policy initiatives so far and to meet the people involved. One of the main challenges that Mexico has is that um, we have uh, more than 2,000 municipalities. Some of those municipalities are very small. They have less than 5,000 individuals living there. So for financial institutions, it's quite costly to establish a branch or provide a channel for financial services. So one of the things that the demand side survey will do is to tell us how the people that live in the small communities in rural areas with less than 5,000 individuals actually uh, fulfill their financial needs. We hope that by identifying the different mechanisms that they actually use, we could find new business models that could attend those uh, segments of the population. Visiting San Juan de la Villa in the Oaxaca state is a great opportunity because you have the chance to talk to people and find out how they have uh, satisfied their financial needs and how financial institutions are supporting them in their daily lives. However, as a policymaker, you cannot visit all the towns in Mexico and know what are the needs and the feelings of people about financial services. So gathering data is not a fashion, it's a tool. And what you actually need to do is to find the better information to design the best policies that could change people's life. Provided the financial sector with information, it's a responsibility from the state and it's a public good that we are developing. We've built um, what we believe are, are, are some of the important pieces for financial inclusion and we hope that, that those uh, policies will converge in, in, into a, a big impact over, over the next couple of years.